So welcome back guys to the channel. So today we're going to be trying out the thermal right contact frame uh, for the LG1700 socket. This fits both 12th gen and 13th gen CPUs. Uh, so today we're going to be trying it out on my i9-13900KS and the ASUS Z790 Tough motherboard. Um, so first of all, let's get into unboxing it. Right, so let's have a look inside the box. So inside of the box, we have the uh, contact frame itself. Uh, I've gone with a silver one. This is just mainly down to preference. Uh, I believe you can get it in red or black. Uh, it's completely down to you. Um, this fits the uh, 12th generation processors and the 13th gen, uh, and should be compatible with most motherboards. Uh, I've got the uh, ASUS Z790 Tough, so I guess we're gonna figure out in this video if it fits. Uh, and then you also get provided with uh, thermal rights thermal paste for TF7. Uh, now I've got no idea if this is any good, not going to lie. Uh, it might be absolute garbage or not. Um, but I'm going to use the Arctic MX6 just because uh, I know that paste is good and I've tested it before and it's worked really well. Uh, so I'm, I'm probably just going to leave this as backup paste to be fair. Uh, and then you also get this little uh, Torx Allen wrench provided. This is going to be used to undo uh, the bolts of your socket and then uh, it's going to be used to uh, bolt them back down um, uh, to the socket. Right guys, so just before we install the contacts frame, I just wanted to quickly do a test on the stock Intel ILM. Uh, so as you can see over here, we are running 5.8 gigahertz on all the P cores and 4.5 gigahertz on all the E cores. Uh, this is currently more of a gaming OC, uh, so I'm using a bit more voltage than you should be. Uh, but we'll do a quick test run on Cinebench R23 and I'll just show you the current temperature with my Arctic Freezer True 360mm water cooler. Uh, so let's do a run here. Now what you'll see is the CPU instantly jumps to 99 and then a few seconds later we go 100 degrees uh, and that is at 300 watts of package power so uh, we're just going to let it finish the test so we can uh, compare the results there we go so we've hit 40,000 points as we can see i'm just going to bring my camera a bit closer and as you can see over here on the temperatures uh, for the cpu we can see that one of the cores hit actually 100 degrees Celsius and then uh, P core one is at 89 degrees Celsius. So, you know, that's an 11 degree disparity between the cores. Uh, so hopefully the thermal right contact frame will uh, bring that disparity down a bit. Now, of course, there's going to be differences in the uh, IHS height because it might be a bit curved on some edges. Um, so we're not, we're not going to get it perfect without lapping it. Um, but yeah, these are our results for our baseline. So we're going to put in the contact frame now and uh, see where we go from there. Right, so we've taken off the stock into ILM right there. And we're going to put down our contact frame. So we need to match up the triangle with the triangle on the CPU there. Like this. There we go. Slots in very snug. And we start putting the bolts in. Alright guys, so as you can see we are now back up and running, we've got Cinebench R23 open and hardware monitor on the right uh, and we will run uh, the multi-core test. So I've been doing some testing for the past few hours and I've been uh, looking at, you know, the temperatures and got a nice uh, 1000 point boost on the score and if we look at our hottest core I'm just going to bring the camera a bit closer so you guys can see better uh, zoom in on this there we go so as you can see our hottest core got to 94 degrees um, so 
that is a six degree reduction on the hottest core uh, whilst turbo in 100 megahertz higher so our power draw was probably a little bit higher as well so i've done some testing in some games and you know i've been uh, trying this out for the past few hours and i found the temperature reduction has actually been more around 10 degrees which you know for let's say a uh, seven or eight pounds whatever it costs you wherever you order this from i think that's a quite nice temperature reduction and you know that 10 degree drop will let you uh, push your frequencies much higher especially in gaming where workloads are much lower you can now uh, push much higher so um, i've been doing some testing uh, for the past few hours and i've actually been able to hit six gigahertz in games stable um, with a contact frame whereas before i could even hit 5.9 stable in games so um, that just shows you that the contact frame does actually make a difference. Um, now, I would like to just kind of part of a disclaimer that some chips might not actually benefit as much as mine. Uh, you know, some, some people might already have a quite flat IHS, which uh, has great contacts with their cooler and they won't have these issues. Uh, so, you know, take this with a pinch of salt. You might see like one or two degrees or you might see 10 degrees uh, or you might see more. So, um, but yeah, uh, that'll do it for the video. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope it was a bit informative. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.